So I've been having some ignition issues lately on the Integra relating to the distributor. I can't imagine why. <laughs> Everyone knows these engines go starting from timing belt side. One, two, three, four. And then firing order on the cap is one, three, four, two. So first step is just to simply undo the electrical connection going to the distributor and to detach it from the side of the distributor. Make sure you get impatient and go ahead and break that connector like I just did. That's definitely what you guys want to do. So the distributor is pretty easy to take off. It's just held on by three 12 mil bolts. So I'm going to go ahead. There's one on the top and then uh, two kind of on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and pull the leads off now just to get them out of the way. And so now I'm going to break loose bolt number two. And bolt number three. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh God, now this cam end plug's leaking too, so while we're in here, we're just gonna throw a new one of these on. Here's our new distributor. So when installing your distributor, the ends of it are tapered, so you can't install it into the camshaft 180 degrees out of phase. Basically, you're gonna get her locked in, we're gonna put the bolts in finger tight because we're gonna need to twist the distributor a little bit when we're setting our timing. So I decided while I was doing this, since I haven't replaced my spark plugs in about seven years, today would be a good time to do that since we're throwing a whole new distributor on there. Let's get a full tune up in. All right, so with the new plugs in and the new distributor on, we're gonna go ahead and set the timing. And you guys don't need anything special to do this except a timing light, but if you don't have one of those, I'll link a couple in the description for you. So there'll be one lead coming off the timing light that you clip onto your ignition wire right in front of the number one ignition cylinder and then you just have a positive and negative cable that go to your battery. Now, once that's all hooked up, before we start the engine and start diving into our timing, we need to jump the service check connector in the vehicle. Now, it's not the OBD2 part. Uh, it's this connector here on Integra's. It's up in the passenger side footwell. And this is a very important step because these have computer controlled electronic ignition. This is gonna bypass the computer trying to adjust the timing on its own so that the computer is not fighting you while you're dialing the timing in. So to start with, go ahead and remove the passenger side kick panel. Well, I lied. I actually don't think you have to remove that kick panel at all because there's really nothing in there. I just gotta pull that blue thing out of the green thing. But honestly, that was accessible before I took that kick panel off, but it said in the book here, it's behind the kick panel, so I don't know. Now, to jump this little connector here, you can get fancy and use a jumper wire, but I'm just gonna use a paper clip. But whatever you use, make sure you guys don't skip this step, because if you try to set the timing without this jumped, you will probably just make the timing worse. Okay, so finally got my paper clip jumper wire in there, and it seems to be staying, and I'm pretty sure it's uh, good enough connection. Okay, so that is our pointer mark there, and that's what we're going to watch and try to have the center red mark on our crank pulley aligned with and appearing stationary when we shine it with the timing light. And by the way, the actual timing spec for B-series engines is 16 degrees. So we're going to start up the engine, but before we can actually start setting our timing, another common mistake people make is they start the engine and they just try to dial the timing in right away, but you can't do this until the engine is up to normal operating temperature, and that's because while the engine is warming up, it's going to be at a higher RPM than normal, somewhere around 1500, whereas we want to set the timing when the engine is at idle, which is going to be 7800 800-ish RPM. Now, while the engine is warming up, I'll show you guys the dash, and this is how we know that our service connector is jumped properly. All the warning lights that are not normally on are on solid, and my check engine light, which has been on for PO420, it is blinking and any systems that do have fault code stored in them, that light will blink at different intervals depending on the code. Which by the way, that's how you would pull codes off these cars if you didn't have a code reader or if it was an older model that's before OBD2. So now with the engine up to temperature, I'm gonna shine my timing light in there and I'm gonna start looking to get that red mark aligned with the pointer. Uh, it, it's not something that I can really film what it looks like because with the frame rate of the camera, it just doesn't pick up the flashing of the timing light properly. But uh, you can see I'm going to adjust my distributor a little bit. So this is why we don't have those bolts torqued down yet. And uh, you're just going to play with it until you get it idling nice and smooth and you've got the alignment marks all aligned correctly. So 
So I'm pretty happy with it there. That looks and sounds good. So we're gonna go ahead and torque down our distributor bolts. And that's it, you're done. Don't forget to take that paper clip out of your service connector. All right. I think we can call her fixed. I also fixed that electrical connector I broke. Good as new.